Bernard Herrmann had one of the most extraordinary careers of certainly any composer in the 20th century. Hitchcock and Herman had a glorious run, the most famous collaboration between a director and a composer in history. Bernard Herman knew how to get to the darker side, but also to lull you into it, not, not necessarily scare you right away. Vertigo, it's possibly the most perfect film score ever made. Bernard Herrmann was quoted as saying, Hitchcock only finishes a film 60%. I finish it for him. The collaboration of Bernard Herrmann with Alfred Hitchcock is historic in the movies. He was already known as a brilliant composer. He had, after all, done the scores for Citizen Kane, The Magnificent Ambersons. Bernard Herrmann started in radio in the 40s with Orson Welles, so he had to be very visual working in radio. He had to communicate things that you couldn't communicate, obviously, that you can in a film. Hitchcock had a career from the 1920s all the way up to the 70s, but something happened when uh, the combination, the element of the collaboration between Bernard Herrmann and Hitchcock in that series of films up to the point in which they parted ways on Torn Curtain, uh, something they, 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 he was settling in, Hitchcock had settled into a certain, he had come to a certain, he had evolved to a certain style, and the person to um, weave that all together was Bernard Herrmann. Bernard Herrmann saw himself as a key component to the story, someone who added to the story, someone who was a dramatist in the same way that the writers and the director and the actors were. The simplicity of means that Bernard Herrmann uses, especially in either science fiction or horror or suspense, that focuses you on the subject. I think when scoring is done well, as Bernard Herrmann did with, with uh, Hitchcock, you could take any cue from any movie and you know what's going on in that scene if you know the film. He was very directly complimenting Hitchcock's storytelling style. I think one reason that Alfred Hitchcock stayed with Bernard Herrmann for so many years was because he realized that this was a composer he could trust. When Hitchcock heard the score for The Trouble with Harry, he realized that he had found, in a way, his musical alter ego. It's a sign of how quickly Hitchcock embraced Herman into his close artistic fold that their second film together, The Man Who Knew Too Much, Bernard Herman not only writes the score, he appears in it as himself as the conductor in the climactic sequence at the Albert Hall. He was so emotional for me, real cinematic emotion, when he was, you know, when he would have these beautiful, delicate themes, but to be this kind of undercurrent of, of dread and, and, and um, something's going to happen, you know, I mean, absolute movie magic stuff and that's why Hitchcock loved them because you know because Hitchcock's films were like that there'd be so many levels going on and everything especially when you've got so many of Hitchcock's films are so internal you look at Vertigo he's sitting in a car he's only turning a wheel like this what are you going to do as a composer but it's all going on in here some have said that Vertigo is Bernard Herrmann's masterpiece. It's an extraordinary score, one that certainly was influential, one that was really not acknowledged at the time. No Oscar nomination, nor was there for Psycho. In fact, none of Bernard Herrmann's scores for Hitchcock received a nomination. The film score for Vertigo is a symphony. It will rank with the best 
late romantic scores ever written for the operatic stage or the concert hall. The music by Bernard Herrmann is doing something absolutely fascinating, which is it's this very simple little theme. Uh, it's varied a little bit, but mostly it kind of goes dun 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 dun. And if you play that uh, on a piano, or if you just listen to it carefully, you'll realize that it doesn't have the traditional kind of of uh, of, of melodic center that you expect in, in, in most popular music and certainly in most movie music. It doesn't quite settle onto any one key. It gives you that sense from the very beginning of not quite having your feet on the ground. Herman's music is not only capturing the emotional state of Jimmy Stewart's character, but it's, it's helping reinforce the sense of an almost ghostly San Francisco. This could never happen nowadays, but you've got smack in the middle of act one of Vertigo, you've got this scene where James Stewart's following Kim Novak, there's like 20 minutes with no talking. I mean, imagine that now in Hollywood, you know, going to a producer, we've got 20 minutes here of this um, scene, no one's gonna talk, we're just gonna let the composer do it, you know, wouldn't happen. based on Tristan and Isolde and uh, Wagner, to a certain extent, uh, that longing, the sense of longing, uh, but it really works. The story of Vertigo is so, in a way, preposterous and outrageous and absurd that this, this man is following a woman who thinks she's the reincarnation of a dead woman, but it's a big plot because someone else is really going to be killed. I mean, it's, it's a very convoluted story. Well, that's all fine because the movie exists and works and thrills us on kind of a dream level. And Herman understood that, and he knew that we had to be pulled into, into a dream, into a nightmare. Bernard Herman was as much a risk taker and a visionary and a forward thinker as Hitchcock was. You don't come up with a score as brutal and as memorable as the Psycho score and not have a couple of screws loose creatively in a really wonderful way. things I love about him is there's something very lateral about him and practical. You've got this scene where this guy's stabbing and jarring, you know. Somewhere along the line, he didn't overthink that. He just went for a stabbing, edgy, you know, knife-like sound with the violins hit so hard across the bridge. I mean, that's kind of the first idea you would come up with, or he would. It's as violent as the scene, and so that's why you get people in the theater doing this. If they're not watching the visuals, they close their eyes, they're getting stabbed by the music. It's like Jaws, John Williams. If you see a fin in the water, what person on the planet doesn't hear da dum da dum Same with Psycho. My girlfriend's in the shower, I walk in, and then what's the sound you make? It's ring, ring, ring. I mean, it's just forever those moments are associated with that music. The screeching violins, the screeching strings, yes, scary, interesting, but that driving music is what propels the picture emotionally and psychologically. The driving, the driving in the car. The music that's driving the characters, taking the characters ineluctably to their doom. Hitchcock 
was a control freak. We all know this. He wouldn't deny that. And he was frustrated because he couldn't control exactly what notes the composer wrote. He would give very precise directives, including tremolos, crescendos, but he couldn't, of course, compose the actual notes. And that's why he had such a good time with the birds, because he could control the notes. In the birds, he chose not to use music at all. But he took it one step further and hired a composer to super supervise the soundtrack for the film, even though there was no music in it. Curiously enough, one of the things that I think defined our collaboration the most for me is the absence of score in the birds, which was essentially suggested by Herman. That defines him as a man with an artistic ego, but not a personal ego. That didn't say, oh, I'm going to do such great music for you. It's almost an elegy of, of what it is to be a collaborator in film. For about two years, there had been some tensions because Herman had scored the film Marnie in 1964, and Hitchcock had been somewhat disappointed with the score. Hitchcock was under enormous pressure from Lou Wasserman and Universal Studios to drop this business of symphonic scores and make pop tunes. And Hitchcock didn't want pop tunes, but because his films weren't doing very well, he had to take orders. Bernard Herrmann didn't really write tunes in his music, and that's part of why you could argue it works, particularly in the Hitchcock films, is that he writes these short phrases that he repeats over and over, changing the instrumentation and pulling you into almost a vortex of sound. But Moon River, it isn't. By the time of Torn Curtain, Hitchcock wanted some kind of commercially exploitable soundtrack, something he called in a memo a beat score. Herman couldn't help himself. He wrote what he thought was best for the film. Herman was well into a day's recording, and the musicians had all applauded at one point. They thought the score was exceptional. Hitchcock walked in, and it's very unfortunate, but apparently he said something to the effect of, it's no good, here's your money, we're through. Torn Curtain would be a much better movie had Hitchcock let Herman use that score. That's true. But still, that was not the score that Hitchcock asked for, and he was the director, just to, to put a little bit of a ledger on Hitchcock's side in that. His very last film was Taxi Driver for Martin Scorsese. He uh, got, him, got him to come back, do a few scores. Spielberg loved him. They always tell the story, uh, Spielberg came to the mixing room while... Bernard Herrmann was there when we were mixing in the music on Taxi Driver. And Steve said, I love you, your work so much, and I, I, I just think it's so extraordinary and what you did with Hitchcock and what you did in this film. And that film goes, oh, yeah, why do you work with Johnny Williams all the time? Why don't you work with me? <laughs> he was very tough. It's interesting that Herman completed that score the night he died. He supervised the last recording session, went back to his hotel and died in his sleep. And I think that tells you right there what a consummate professional he was. Uh, not, of course, that he knew that would happen, but he would come up with something startling and brilliant and then left. Bernard Herrmann is one of the most influential film composers ever. There's something in Bernard Herrmann's music that touched upon a darker, deeper side of the story. The very particular voice, the very particular space that Bernard Herrmann Hitchcock occupied was never occupied by 